Hey friends, Richard here at the Jam Space with another weekly Wednesday video for you. Um, taking a look again at the Fred Kelly Bumblebee picks. Um, I've had a little more time to play with them and I've gotten to know them a little bit better. And I have found out that I was, I was wrong about something in my last video. So I wanted to clear that up. I want to thank uh, Ralph and the team at Fred Kelly Picks in Grayling, Michigan. Um, great American-made products and great customer service. Um, I sent them an email. I thought I had the wrong picks. Long story short, I actually didn't. Uh, don't believe everything that you read in the Amazon comments. So let's get that misconception out of the way. First thing, it's the size of the, the black portion of the pick. If you get the teardrop version, it's not larger than the jazz version. So the, the difference between the jazz version of the bumblebee pick and the teardrop version all comes down to the point of the pick there. It's just a little bit more pointy on the jazz one and a little bit more rounded off on the teardrop version. That's really it. The size um, is uh, comparable to the um, maybe popularly well-known uh, Jim Dunlop Jazz 3 picks, so they're kind of a little bit s sort of on the small size uh, for what a lot of guitar players would call um, regular pick size. They're, they're a little bit smaller than that. So um, now I'm going to recommend that you get the teardrops. I found that the point is is quite pointy actually on there. It, it's, it does everything that I need it to do. Um, but if you feel that you want something with an even sharper point, go for the Jazz. I'm also going to recommend that you uh, get the, the large size of the pick. Now that's talking about this yellow clasp here. Uh, even though it's the large size, I still found it a little bit small. So I had to um, put it into some water, uh, put it on the stove, get it to a boil, and I let it uh, sit in as the water started to boil. I maybe like three seconds, uh, scoop it out of there with a fork, dry it off really quickly and you just put your thumb in there and what that does is the yellow portion is kind of flexible a little bit at that point so you can get it your, you know your thumb can kind of go in there and you can shape it to the size that you need it for it to be comfortable and to hold well uh, after maybe four or five seconds on your thumb you can just put it aside leave it for a few minutes and just kind of let it get back to temperature and then go check it out, try it on your guitar, just to make sure it's how you wanted it to be. It, it worked for me, I tried it on three picks so far, first try on every single one of them, so it's not a not really a hard thing to do to customize the size of this pick for yourself. Um, other things that, now that I've had a little bit of time to kind of play with the pick, things that I've, I, I thought I liked, but I've come to appreciate them a little bit more, it's, the main feature of this pick really is is the fact that the pick is movable, right? Um, and so you can change the the direction of, of the pick. And for myself, I like to have it angled just a little bit kind of towards the, the tip of my thumb or towards the headstock on the guitar when I lower my thumb down into playing position. That seems to just get, for how I hold my hand on the guitar, that gets the point to the uh, to the string when I'm when I'm playing single notes like this, and it it's it's kind of replicates how I would use a flat pick when I when I put my index finger under there and I go for strumming. I don't know if you notice. Maybe you want to go back to the intro um, and just watch how I transition between strumming and finger styling. The pick works really great for, for both styles and just going from one right into the other style. Now the other thing about the pick, not just the angle, but you can actually pull it out a little bit or you can tuck it in a little bit. So it's got some play backwards and forward. If you if you have it in the outward uh, position, it's, it's going to give you a little bit more of um, a wobble, I guess, to the pick. More um, like kind of like looser for maybe strumming. Uh, purposes and then if you you tuck it in it gets a little bit tighter under your thumb and that gives it, it's a little bit more rigid and of course that's when you also want to maybe put your index finger under there and then it's really really stiff so you're playing something fast it's not gonna be you know doing this it's just right there so uh, it's a really great pick um, 
somebody uh, who watched the previous video um, made a comment in that video and he said, you know, I really like the sound of the pick. That's probably the, the fact that it's made of Delrin which is commonly known to be a, a very good uh, material for making guitar picks. So um, the, uh, the Delrin Bumblebee Teardrop Large Picks from Fred Kelly Picks, uh, I really like them a lot. I'm going to be uh, playing these for a long time. If you're looking for them and you need the specific model number for this three pack here, it's D5TB-H-3. Uh, please go ahead and uh, find those affiliate links down below. I make a small commission, um, but you won't be charged anything extra. So that's kind of the great thing about that. You can learn about the picks, and then if you decide to try them out, um, you can help me out too. I just wanted to clear up, um, you know, the misinformation that I kind of proliferated. I wanted to get it out there. The, the jazz and the teardrop, the size of the pick is not different. It is just the point is sharper on the jazz pick so that's it okay well that's really all that i had to say about the fred kelly bumblebee picks i just wanted to take the moment here if you're still watching to encourage you to comment like and subscribe it really helped me and uh, the channel out a lot if we could get a few more of you uh, on the team, subscribe. We'll be back next Wednesday. Um, I will be continuing the Rescue My Rigs series, and we will get to look at the uh, Earthquaker Devices Swiss Things pedal and the rest of my drive section. So I'm really excited to get that one out and uh, start making some music. And speaking of making music, I am going to play us out here with the uh, track that I started this video off, I will get to the chorus. And it is by one of my favorite songwriters of all time, Elliot Smith. If you're not familiar with his work, check that guy out. He's no longer with us, but he left an awesome catalog of, of music to check out. So, anyways, Richard here at the Jam Space. We will see you next Wednesday. Here's Elliot Smith's See You Later.